Uh, first speaker is Don Landis. Um, good evening, President Rogers, board members, and Superintendent Allison. Uh, I'd like to take a moment to say that I agree with Connie uh, on the value of high school sports and the lessons learned. They are indeed important. Um, and when we talk about budget cuts and financial matters and stuff, it's good to keep in mind that high school athletics do have many, many values to the community. Uh, and we saw a good example of that this evening. My question for the school board this evening is this. If the current Southeast High School location is landlocked now, why was it considered adequate in 2008 when the district promised improvements on the current property? What has changed in that time since then? In fact, there is property current available for sale that is adjacent to the current location. We have heard quite a bit about landlocked property, but nothing about this parcel of land that is adjacent to the school location. Why has there been no discussion? To this layman, the available property at 5224 East Terry, the Sunrise uh, Park Apartments, appears to be a good fit for the needs of the Southeast High School community. If the administration has reviewed this property, perhaps they can tell us today uh, if it meets the needs stated previously at other board meetings. This is but one question the school board has been reluctant to tape up uh, publicly. The comparison of busing cost has not been publicly reviewed yet, and the costs are critical to any apples to apples cost comparison uh, and the value of relative sites and plans. The total cost of land preparation at 127th East and Pawnee uh, has not been laid out either, and to least to my satisfaction, um, and that may be addressed in the remarks that Superintendent Allison will be uh, giving later. Some members of the board seem impatient and want to move ahead on the superintendent's uh, preferred plan before all of the facts have been given and before the community has had an opportunity to speak directly to the board on this issue in some type of public forum. The board has had the time and energy in 2008 to speak to the public. In 2013, it appears that some board members are in a hurry to move this project along without the community having an opportunity for discussion. Thank you um, for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Our next speaker is Peter Grant. Uh, thank you, Superintendent Allison and the school board. You know, I'm, I want to speak about Southeast High School. I live on the west side of town, so I don't live near Southeast, but I feel for the residents of the area. You know, what would I do if a school near me that was vital to the area was looking to be closed and replaced with a new school? I look at the fact with the economy the way it is, at least in Wichita, do we need to spend upwards of $50 million for a new school, or can we get away with spending about 15 to $20 million to buy extra land, refurbish, and upgrade the present Southeast High School? Do you as members of the board, you know, do you buy a new car house when it gets old just because you have to put some money into it? The school is not just a building, but it's part of the neighborhood and community. What happens if you go ahead and decide to close Southeast and build a new school? Are you sure you can sell Southeast for a fair price, or will it go on an auction block to be sold at a fire sale price that has been already done with other properties? You claim that with Southeast, at least the name will remain. Well, a new school to replace Southeast might be Southeast in name, but not in spirit. When the new Yankee Stadium was built, it was no longer the place of history where Ruth Gehrig and DiMaggio played. The same can be said of Southeast. The ghost might re remain, but the history that was Southeast will be gone. From what I have read, it seems to me that, that minds have already been made up and the present Southeast will be a distant memory. Let us not let that happen. Remember, promises were made to keep the present Southeast and to also build a new school in the Southeast quadrant of the district. Keep those promises. Do not let happen to Southeast what happened to the new school in Bel Air and to the promises made to the people of the area. Also keep in mind the cost you quote today will not be the cost when all is said and done. Building supply costs are going up throughout the United States because of a construction boom going on and that will affect the costs in Wichita. Think long and hard before taking any action that may close the present Southeast High School. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, Mike. 2008 bond issue update evaluation of four <coughs> projects. This second bond issue agenda item is in follow-up to discussion at the March 25th Board of Education meeting. 
The administration recommended the board evaluate options for four projects, Caldwell Elementary School, Robinson Middle School, Southeast High School, and a new Southeast Quadrant High School. This item provides an opportunity for the board's discussion and or appropriate action. We do have two speakers who registered before noon today. Okay. Uh, first speaker is Michael Kennard. Welcome, Michael. And again, before you start my time, I, 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 Mr. President, if I just uh, one brief moment so that I can thank your colleagues. We were classmates of all coming in <laughs> together as board members, and I do thank you for your service, Connie, and your service, Lenore. Over the years, uh, you guys hung in there like troopers, and uh, I appreciate all your efforts of what you have done. So thank you, thank you, and thank you. And Lynn, you just got a picture just because you were in it. I, <laughs> all I can say is I looked a whole lot younger then, and, and That's what I was just these ladies haven't changed at all. What Not at all. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, President Rogers, Superintendent Allison, board members, I speak as a member of the public to bring an alternative solution to the Southeast and new Southeast, which I will refer to as uh, Sierra Hills High School. I believe there are two different issues. Both can be dealt with to the satisfaction of all. In no way do I oppose the new Southeastern Sierra Hills High School. That is a wonderful development for the city as a whole. And for all the reasons that a neighborhood needs a high school, I agree. This is a $35 million request for 800 students and $54 million for 1500 if I understood the numbers correctly. Now, for all the same reasons that you want a high school in the Sierra, Sierra Hills neighborhood, we need Southeast. The tradition that is Southeast is at Lincoln <coughs> and Edgemore. All the legendary buffaloes roam those halls. From Jeff Smith to Joseph Randall, they left their sweat and tears on the football fields at that location. But by moving the name to another building, it's like removing the history and the tradition that is the Golden Buffaloes. They're different schools. The demographics will not allow them to be the same. We can only presume that the, the demographics will be more of a Northwest versus a West. And the simple evidence of property value will say that to us. The current neighbors is 100,000 and below. The new neighbors will be 100,000 and above. These are separate schools. And I ask that you treat them separately. Now, being the member that actually made the board request to upgrade our sports facilities, I can share that we were primarily looking at the football and basketball facilities. And the board should take great pride in achieving that, that goal. Uh, I see the buildings going up. I still referee, so I, I get to the pleasure of being in them sometimes. But the proposal before you today includes a new gym, a new bas baseball, softball, and tennis facility for $13 million. Southeast does not necessarily need the baseball, softball, and tennis facilities. It would be nice, but the land just does not support a major sports complex. But something that we talked about in our early meetings was building a multi-purpose sports facility that multiple schools can utilize, if we were to put it as a satellite. One softball and diamond and one doesn't really help the overall scheme of things. If you want to do tournaments or whatnot, you need more fields. And Southeast has gotten along just fine over the 50 years. I know I'm up. Um, I just recommend that you replace the current gym with the new floor plan of heights and do not build the baseball, softball, and uh, tennis facilities. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Michael. Our next speaker is Dave Robbins. Thank <clears throat> you. 
Board Member, Superintendent Allison, uh, thank you for the three minutes. The decision you have to make is between urban sprawl or rehab in an inner city neighborhood. Your service plan should look at farmland versus a multiracial integrated neighborhood, farm roads versus four lane <coughs> paved streets with signalized intersections, farmland versus sidewalks on both sides of the street so students can walk for miles to the school, farmland versus storm drains and no drainage issues. Have you looked at the stormwater runoff and the uh, impact downstream uh, at the, on the farmland. Farmland versus multifamily housing that now allows the uh, parents to participate in after school activities. Farmland versus emergency care facilities within minutes from the school via Christia, state of the art. Farmland versus the water tower capacity for, for fighting fires or are you gonna have to build a uh, water tower at, at your facility? Farmland versus school operates under the watchful eye of the Wichita Police Department and the children uh, coexist with us in the neighborhood and they're taken care of. Dillon's when faced with the same decision demolished their store at Harry and Edgemore and built a new multi-million dollar store at the same location. Quick Trip and Walgreens have fairly new facilities at Harry and Edgemore. These corporations are there because the number of people and their purchasing power reside in the neighborhoods. I recommend that you demolish Southeast High School in stages at the current location and build a new school there rather than causing another social burden on a neighborhood that went through forced busing for apparently no reason. We have an integrated neighborhood, now you wanna close the school. Remember that land you purchased is valuable until the day you build a school on it and as an aside, the last book I read was a signed copy of Produce or Starve, a book full of insight and wisdom. Board members, thank you very much. Thank you, Dave. All right. We'll move the discussion to the table. Uh, John? Oh, okay. presentations on the screen so we'll follow along there thank you mr. Rogers uh, I, I promise no death by PowerPoint tonight it uh, it will be uh, um, brief and to the point uh, as we take a look at uh, at those remaining projects uh, and we've we've walked through some of the the complexities of the issue. Um, we I've talked about excuse me really a a three pronged approach on how we would uh, how we would take a look at, as we move forward, as well as wanting to make sure we do that in a, a very methodical systemic way. So what I'd like to do is is lay out um, generally this evening uh, what what I would recommend as a timeline for the board's consideration um, as we move forward. First is the, the overall purpose. And at, at every board meeting, we start not only with the Pledge of Allegiance, but the board president reading um, what, what the work of the Wichita Public Schools is all about. And what we're really talking about is providing the community, the opportunity for our students to be prepared and to have the type of facilities, which was the whole foundational reason for the 2008 bond plan, that, that allows them um, not only opportunity from athletics and fine arts, but academically to give them the, the foundational skills necessary as we look toward college and career readiness. So that's, that, that, that's really the, the fundamental component of all the decisions, difficult decisions you've had to make um, regarding our bond plan has been with that in mind. So as we look at these final projects, it's, it's really around um, 
trying to meet those needs at the same time providing an opportunity for community engagement as you have to make some difficult decisions regarding how we move forward with uh, those projects. Um, and I put a, a date in here anticipating that uh, a decision would be made by um, our final meeting in June right, as, as our target date. Again, it's, it's important to clarify that uh, the, the board has not made any decisions. There are difficult decisions yet to be made that this will not only be um, a decision you make based on input from our stakeholders, but you have to look at future impact, not only five years down the road, but 25 and, and more, and unfortunately, the reality of the fiscal impact. Um, as I mentioned earlier, when we think of the loss of capital equalization at the state level, and that bottom line is our ability to operate facilities both now and in the future um, is of course uh, uh, been hit significantly over sixty million dollars uh, um, in in cuts and as we look toward the future that does not appear in any of the current budget proposals on the table right now for next year and the future um, it, it's not replacing any of those cuts it's the, the new reality is where we are today. Um, and, and as I've talked about, uh, flat does not mean flat. But those are the tough decisions that, uh, that you all are going to have to make as we move forward. Regarding the, the community engagement, um, and as I said, uh, we've talked about um, a, a three-pronged approach. The first being collection of data answering, um, some of your questions beginning to lay out uh, some of the information. A, a long list of questions that you've had, data you've requested, staff continues to work diligently to, to put all that information together. And it was everything from um, master schedules to transportation to operating costs to, to, to roads to property acquisition, all of those aspects. Um, it, really focusing on this month as, as our data collection with coming back at our next meeting on um, April 22nd and being able to, to lay out all that information. And to be able to make the comparisons, um, particularly when we talk about the, the, the Southeast questions regarding really the three options that, uh, um, that we've discussed. Uh, a new Southeast Quadrant High School um, and maintaining uh, the current Southeast refurbishment of Southeast or building a, a new quadrant high school with the idea that Southeast would relocate. So coming back with those three options and, and being able to provide the, the, the database that you need. Um, the second then is really the month of late April and May being about collecting and engaging um, feedback and information from our community. So that's, that's what I want to um, highlight uh, a little bit here. As we think about our, uh, who we want to, to hear from and, and get input, uh, of course, are, are the parents currently in the southeast um, boundary area, current southeast students. The overall southeast community, including neighbors and, and alums, and you've had a number of those folks address you over the last couple weeks. The Bond Oversight Committee. These are folks that uh, have looked at the big picture and worked through um, all of our projects uh, up to date and, and been uh, um, the board and our community's eyes and ears really in, in discussing some of these projects. Uh, staff at the uh, current schools in the southeast boundary area and citizens taxpayers and this is a fairly large group because depending on decisions you make the impact to this decision may go well beyond the southeast um, boundary and community. If you look at uh, uh, opening a new school and maintaining the current southeast, that requires boundary changes. So that, that will have an impact on, on other parts of the, the 259 community as well. And, and getting some information from our realtors. So you can see this, this really is a, a, a wide mix of individuals with the idea that we're, we're targeting, as I said, late April and May. Um, really is stakeholder listening and input month. And then being able to come back with, um, uh, with the third phase 
of, of the approach with the board being able to take and receive that input um, and, uh, and make that decision in June. Now, as we take a look at the community engagement opportunities, um, these are not exclusive of any options we, we may look at depending on, on how the board wants to proceed, but I think that these are, are pretty straightforward in, in groups. As we look at parent engagement, looking at site councils, um, potential surveys of, of school and parents in uh, the southeast boundary area, um, talking with our, our students, both currently at Southeast and our middle school students, because those are um, students that are currently in middle school and upper elementary will be the ones that uh, um, will actually receive the benefit of the decisions you make um, as we move forward. The current Southeast students, regardless of the decision, um, will, will probably not have that opportunity. Uh, the community input as we look at uh, public opportunities, um, looking at uh, um, different groups within the southeast boundary, um, getting input from staff. We've received some preliminary input uh, from staff and, and we'll continue as the, dis uh, as the data unfolds, we'll have the opportunity to, to take that to the, to the next level. Um, looking at realtors who focus in, in that southeast area, I've had a number of realtors that uh, I received um, some type of contact from just saying, given the opportunity, we'd love to provide um, input on our analysis as real estate professionals uh, that, that work um, in that area a great deal. And then the potential is, as you all have, uh, have asked um, about online feedback. So through data collection, the month of May will be very busy as we look at, at trying to engage um, multiple stakeholder groups within the community and then bringing back that information so that you have not only the data but you have the input um, and, and you begin to have your discussion uh, here at the board table. Um, again, that's a discussion in public. It puts you all as, as you move forward um, with the information you'll need to, to make that, uh, that difficult decision. Um, and I think, uh, again, listening to input, and sometimes there's, there's a misconception that if you listen and don't act as an individual wants, that, that you, you didn't listen to begin with. And I think as, as you see um, what we've laid on the table here as, as groups that we need to, to work with, that would, uh, that would not be the case. Um, in the end, the decision is still going to be difficult. Our fiscal picture, um, when we started pause and study, you may remember a number of folks that came to the podium and said, why are you doing this? Continue with the projects because you, you've heard promises that um, when the economy improves, the, these cuts will be restored. Um, that hasn't happened. Your, your conservative approach to that aspect um, has, has, has been absolutely played out. Uh, the fear was that those cuts would not be restored and that there may be additional cuts to, to our operations. So um, again, taking that deliberate systemic approach to, to this decision will be, um, will be very important. Be happy to take any questions, input as, as we work to, to develop what, uh, what May looks like and, and how we'll engage. There's, there's a great deal of work and details to be done. As I said, at our next board meeting, um, I can't promise that I won't have quite a few PowerPoint slides and a series of information for you because we, we really do need to look at, at uh, those, those details and, and the data. Um, one component that uh, I think it's important as, as we look toward uh, the next board meeting is to remember that as you look at these options, many of the, the difficult discussions from boundaries and, and those aspects, we were going to have. With the 2008 bond plan, we were going to have to have those, those difficult discussions. What nobody anticipated at that point was just where we'd be from a, a fiscal operation um, component. But again, three-pronged approach. We've been collecting data, responding to your questions, being able to bring that back at the next board meeting. Um, then uh, late April and through the month of May, engaging um, various stakeholders to be able to provide uh, um, you all with, with their input and feedback, and then coming back in June with all of that information um, and allowing you all to, uh, to begin the deliberative process uh, here at the board table.
So with that said, I will be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Okay. We'll have discussion back here to the board. Uh, Betty? One of the things that really concerns me um, in looking at um, the decision and the information that we will be gathering is the fact that I feel we are on different pages. And I'm wondering if there is any kind of way that we can channel the feedback um, where it's more in line with what we need to do. We hear from the public and um, most of the uh, comments that I'm hearing are more emotional, uh, attachment uh, to a specific building, not factoring in um, the budget, the problems that we would have in terms of operation, the practical kinds of things that we as a board would have to take into consideration. Um, and again, the decision not weighing just on um, um, the emotional thing. We've gotten used to that and, and we'd love to keep the school. I'm not sure if there is any way that we could be on the same page where the public weighs in and they are looking at the same set of circumstances that we as board members would have to look at some economical choices that we have to make not because we want to but this is the hand that we have been dealt do you have any kind of idea um, how we could approach it where we're getting the public to weigh in their feedback based on those set of circumstances? Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I, you're exactly correct. I mean, it, when you get into to discussions like this, there's an emotional component, and then we have to, a, a, as you all, have to, to balance not only the emotional component, but the, the fact-based component, the, the data component. Um, I think after our next board meeting, when we're able to, to put a lot of that on the table, um, what we, we would not, in my opinion, want to, to do in engaging the community is say, what do you think? That what we need to ask the community is, these are the options or the considerations that you all, A, are, um, are, are going to have to deliberate, but the other is, what do you need to hear from the community? So really, a a after we take that next step, um, part of my response is, is back to the board on what do you need to hear from the community? How do we structure the, the opportunity to he hear some of the factual base? Because there will be some that want factual base and there will be others that will be dealing from the emotional base. Um, how do we balance those two, and what is it you need back from the stakeholders uh, as you deliberate? So um, I, I think once the, you, there's always the vacuum when you don't have the specific information yet, folks want to fill that vacuum, and, and we're, we're seeing some of that now. Uh, based on uh, you all had quite a list of the factual components that, that you want to take into consideration. So that comes back on April 22nd. Um, and, and then I guess the, my real response is, I think at that point, I'm going to ask the board as we then prepare for um, really engaging the community, what is it you need back uh, to help with, with your deliberation? But I, I, I don't think that we want to go with just a, a blank page and say, you know, what, what do you think? We need to provide those those options um, for consideration and some of the information around it, and then you get feedback that has um, has value because there's there's some in, instructional base. Y you know, at the heart, um, uh, as a teacher, you know, I wouldn't expect my students to immediately be able to to, to jump to the culminating activity without the opportunity to, to educate them um, ar around some of the basics. And I think that's what we're gonna have to, have to do with our community, uh, particularly because of um, what, a, what a tremendous uh, emotional component this is and, what, and that's why it makes it uh, so difficult. 
And there's just one other comment I'd like to throw in. I got an opportunity to read an article um, where the Southeast students had um, um, put together some things that they wanted to see, which, which was so interesting. I, I don't know if it looks like the rest of the board got an opportunity to see that same, same thing. Um, and I really would like to have student comments be a, a big part of that. I, I cut that article out just so I could refer to it as we go down the road. Well, and I guess I want to inject something here before the next speaker. I, I've been playing in this in my mind as well what we need to do with all this. I mean, it's similar to our discussions last year, but you know, in essence, what you know, we have to be educated as well. There's still a lot of questions in our minds to to know what is the best option of, of the different options. Um, and really what I think is important in this community discussion is that people help us uh, tell us what they value. Um, you know, place, the location is really important, but I also hear from, from folks that live, you know, in the Coleman area, which is a long ways from, you know, Edgemore. It's not any farther to Lincoln Edgemore than it is to, to, the, to the new school. Um, so is place more important than equity? Is equity more important than um, you know the the 21st learning century? I think that's where we're needing to go. And then when it comes back to us after we look at what we're hearing the community, what they value, uh, you know, we have to look at also what the future holds. You know, there were probably a lot of farmland fields when Northwest was built. Not anymore. But. That's the same thing that's going to happen down in the southeast section of town. Um, and then also we have to understand the fiscal impact. When, when it comes down to the end, we have to make sure that we can still balance a budget and do what we need to do. And I think that's still one of our most serious issues. The legislature's not done yet. And there still could be you know, cuts. And uh, I think we need to be ready to, to adjust to that. So those are our financial um, and reality. So I think we have to keep those things in mind as well. I'm talking too much. I'm sorry. Uh, Barb. No, Lynn, I think you have a r very valid point with is what's more important between these items. I think that's a good point that we haven't discussed, and I think it would give us some information that we really could have a visual mm -hmm. of what the community is telling us. I guess I'd also kind of want to know, is it a student participating? Is it a, a parent who has a student within the area? You know, those kinds of things. We don't need to work that out here. What, what I put my name on uh, about, on the uh, community engagement opportunities, um, I noticed parent engagement had conversations and feedback, and then the students, you know, were uh, surveys. And then when we got to the community input, what I'm trying to figure out there is that opportunity for anybody in the community, community being around southeast, the, the new, where the new area is. Um, I wasn't quite sure as we looked at these targeted audiences whether this is for everyone or if that had not been worked out yet. I mean, I know we want to get all those groups in some way. Yeah, we, we the, the the details. Um, you know, we have to continue to work on. Uh, I think it's a little bit of all of the above. I mean, this this definitely has an impact on on the southeast boundary directly, uh, but it also has an impact on on the the community as a whole. So, um, not limiting to just if if you reside in the southeast boundary as as we seek some input. Um, I think we'll, we'll need to, to broaden that somewhat. The other thing if I, I do, understood your question correctly. I you did you did the thing I, I do like the media engagement. I think if we can work with the media and the things that are important for the board to find out or to make them aware of, I still really believe that the majority of people do not I, understand, and I understand why they don't understand it. I wouldn't either if I wasn't in this position. What financial? roadblock we're hitting here real quick. We, we know what we got to do to educate kids, but we got to build buildings and we got to have, you know, all of these things uh, in place. Now, John, I have a few questions. You want me to hold them till the end or just? I, I would say go ahead and ask them. Okay. And if you can answer them, that's great. If not, we can put that on our... Do you have anything on the mo mobility rate of all three schools? I'm thinking Caldwell, Curtis, and Southeast. Um, I, I do. I, I don't have. High. I don't have that at at my fingertips. Okay. 
Um, and that's part of when we come back and, and look at the, at the demographics. And you'd ask the question about cohort groups. Right. Um, and and okay, we, have, yeah. we have worked through that, and, and uh, I'll have that information for you. And infrastructure keeps coming up as we've heard the public speak. Maybe we have an understanding of some of that, and I know that will take some work to bring that. Um, okay. Let me look here. Uh, absolutely oh. a component that, uh, that, that would be part of our 20-second uh, conversation. Great. And the, um, when do you have any idea when we're actually going to know on, on funding from the state? Or you don't, you, <laughs> you would be the supreme if you knew that, right? <laughs> um, they're, they're taking the month of April off oh, well, predominantly. Of yeah. And then uh, as they come back in May, what we've seen in the past, uh, the, the Speaker of the House is saying he, he wants to hold to, to the 80-day calendar. Uh, I, I would anticipate it's going to be late May to June. Um, it, that's if, if they reach, reach agreement, but there, there seems to still be uh, quite, quite a gap between the, the House and the Senate. And really it stems around the, the sales tax, um, okay. whether that's... It was um, it, it was too sunset, and whether they they extend that or not, and the governor's budget, um, as well as the Senate's budget, doesn't even begin to float without the extension of the sales tax. Okay, thank you. Okay, Connie. Um, John, I have several questions, and again. Um, I'm not so sure all these will be able to be answered tonight, but I'd like to get them in the pool sure. for answers. Um, first off, one of the speakers tonight again said, we're going to sell Southeast. Now, either I'm really hard of hearing or whatever, but I have never heard at this table any conversation about selling Southeast High School. That is, that is correct. Right. I've heard a lot about repurposing it to correct. a different use, and that, that, but I that haven't heard anything about selling building. Southeast. Correct. Okay. I just wanted to make that clear again that we are not going, we have not talked about that. It's, it's not even on the table. So I just wanted to make that clear again. Um, it would be helpful to me on the 22nd, being a very visual learner, if I could see a comparison of Southeast High School and the new high school and all the costs that would be involved in um, with the current Southeast either fixing it up and what all that would be involved, including an estimate, you know, I know we're going to have to buy property. I don't know what's going to, if there's going to be any land preparation um, for the new, for the current Southeast High School, if the soil is right in that area that we're going to have to accumulate, or if there's going to have to be prep done there. I also have received an email from a current parent there who is advocating getting the kids out of there because she says there are cracks in the, I think the walls and the floors and that the building the facility itself is deteriorating. Now I will admit I have not toured Southeast for quite some time and I'm going to put that on my calendar to go over there and have Leroy walk me around and just look at the facility so I can get a better feel for it. Uh, but I need to know, I guess I need to know all the costs in dealing with the current Southeast either to bring it up for kids to be in there or to repurpose it. I also need to know in the, in the new building, one of the speakers tonight talked about uh, water and fire and all those other things that go along with having a new facility in a, I think he called it a wheat field. So I need to know, are there some costs that we aren't aware of yet that we may be having to come up with that we don't know about or haven't talked about yet? Do you understand what I'm asking here? Am I making my... Uh, yes, and, and let me... Not going to detail, but okay. um, a absolutely that's information that, uh, that we need to bring back to you. When, when we talk about the cost, uh, I, I think what we need to talk about are, are the order of magnitude costs, not down to the, to, to the, to the minuscule line item. When we look at the, the physical nature of the building, um, what, what's construction, what's land acquisition cost, what other site preparation might be necessary, um, th those are all costs that when you when you build a new building or you're going to refurbish, um, we're expected. 
Yes. I mean, w when you look at um, the bond plan for Southeast, it, it was going to require from day one some property acquisition. That's not, that's not new. That's not a surprise. No. Um, it's as we look at that equity issue. Um, and, and I think Mr. Rogers put it well earlier. You know, there are a number of really tough um, aspects of the decision when we think about equity, we think mm -hmm. about location, we think, I mean, all, all those components that, that have to be weighed. So uh, absolutely being able to bring back in, um, you know, when we talk about the, the construction costs for new and we, we've got estimates for um, what we think the, the upgrades to Southeast would be, you know, what are those, the, those primary um, components to it? Uh, absolutely. I do want to address the, the, the comment and, and question you may have received regarding Southeast today. Southeast is, is not collapsing. Um, it, it's it's a, a, a good structure. It's just 50 plus years old. Yeah, it's old. And like anything, you're going to have settlements and, and, and the district works to maintain uh, a safe environment for their students. So the, the real issue is those are aspects that we, you deal with when you deal with um, facilities. Uh, let's take a look at East. East is a little bit older than, than Southeast, mm -hmm. and, and you still have, um, you know, you're going you're gonna to have those issues where you get some, um, particularly with the type of drought we've had, you get a little settlement which is, is going to have a window or a door skew or, or some of those types of things. And that's just like our homes, that's what we have to deal with and, and why we have such an aggressive preventive maintenance um, that, uh, that Julie looks at, that we're, we monitor those things and, and try to take care of them. Um, you know, it really, when you look at some of those issues, it's a 50 plus year old school. Right. Um, and uh, um, you can't re engineer a 50 year old school or a 75 year old school to be just like a, a, a brand new school. But those, those are components we, we need to bring back. I think that leads to some of the equity questions that, mm -hmm. uh, that the board will have in, in front of them as, as you have some of those, those discussions. Yep. Uh, one other question, Lynn. Um, I, I thought you didn't have a voice tonight. I found it. All right. Um, at what time will you be prepared to discuss with us your in more detail your ideas about repurposing Southeast? At what point in the discussion will you bring some of those out in a little bit more detail? I think on the 22nd. The 22nd. I mean, that's, that, that's, that's a key component know. question that comes up, okay. and, and um, I feel confident we can, we can address okay. some, of, some of those questions. All right. Thank you. Cheryl. Thank you. Uh, some of my questions have been answered by the, the other board members' questions, but the one that hasn't is the timeline for these meetings. Will that come back to us on the 22nd, too, these community meetings that you have proposed so that we have some idea of what might be happening when and we can start? I think we'll have more details fleshed out. It's going to be you know, trying to, to work with, with our, our buildings on when their site council meetings are and, and those types of things. But I think as, you know, with, with each week as we move forward, we'll have more detail. Okay. Thank you. I do like the idea of the site councils. I think that's a good group mm -hmm. to tie in. Uh, Lenora? I just had a procedural just input in regards to lessons learned from our boundary conversations and some frustration that already sort of feel bubbling up is that uh, when we when we do big things like this there's some idea that everyone's already made up their mind and the decision's already been made and it doesn't really matter what questions are asked and a lot of that came I think through the bond um, experience I mean I excuse me through the boundary change experience was that we would ask for input but somehow our community didn't really hear some of what came from the input is that clear in regards to questions asked but not getting answers and so I'm just thinking as we're fleshing out some of this community engagement piece I would just encourage us you know as we're looking at how we get information but also the deliverables deliverables back as much as we can in regards to you know what did the student survey say what did you know some of those kinds of things um, clearly when we have meetings with parents and we're asking some questions about their values that we be able to draw some of that information back to some decision making so um, 
not any specific questions in regards to that, but just trying to, again, just lessons learned from our last community engagement. So and, thank you. And I you. think that's a key component of why we have to, to work to um, engage and get the assistance of the media and the community, because there wasn't anything we collected, any of that feedback that wasn't available on the website. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there, there was, you know, every piece of information you had in front of you, the supposals, all the data behind it, everything was made available. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and helping get that message out that mm -hmm. it's there. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that, uh, you know, there, there wasn't anything arbitrary in the decisions that, that you all made or the recommendations I made. Um, the information, the public input, the survey, all of that stuff was was given to the board as well as made available to, to the community and that's that's why I think that's going to be an important piece um, as we move forward is getting the the assistance and and folks to understand it, that will be the same way in in this decision um, what information you have is is available to the public and and we will we will do that on our website it's about as as straightforward, I think, as as we can get um, in in putting the information out there. Oftentimes, it was posted the same night or or, or the next morning, um, and, and we'll can you know I, I guarantee we'll continue to operate that way and and try to make the information um, as available as as quickly as possible. But we're going to need some assistance in making sure folks understand that. Well, and I. I guess the other thing I want to add to that as well is, I mean, we, if I believe, got a disk of the input, the comments, and mm -hmm. I was over 300 pages, mm -hmm. as you know. You get that many comments from the public, you're not going to have everybody okay. think you're going to listen to them. You know, there, there's going to be some that, that, you know, they feel they weren't listened to because we didn't do exactly what they wanted. And that's unfortunate, uh, but again, it comes back, you know, decisions that we made over the years that while we've had some board members that want to, you know, greatly... Uh, raise pay you know we there are also folks that haven't wanted to necessarily pay for that you know by raising the taxes and mm -hmm. we had to make those discussions early in our service mm -hmm. and um, so if you're going to do one you have to do the other to make that work and that's partly where we're at that we have to struggle with and and quite frankly that's why we get paid the big bucks that we do to exactly. you know ultimately make that decision and I, I don't mean that lightly I just mean that that ultimately the buck will have to stop with us so uh, Betty um, one other thing I thought about, we did have a speaker tonight that um, made reference to Southeast being landlocked, but we knew it was landlocked then, and and I, I, I think that perhaps the speaker was missing the point that uh, when we passed the bond issue, there was money available then that we don't have available now. So that leads into my question, since we are making choices and decisions, when you come back, will we have some idea um, what it would cost if we were to try and, and purchase the um, surrounding properties at Southeast? Yes, I mean we, we we can do our 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 best guess, um, and uh, you know as as we analyze that, we learned uh, um, with our property acquisitions here at North, and we learned what that impact if if there's a um, a negotiated sale versus imminent domain and and what costs are associated with with that. Uh, so we'll yeah. a, a absolutely be able um, to bring back what. What we think that range looks like. Was there some kind of formula, and this is the last one, I know that uh, property that was uh, used as income producing sold much higher, uh, you had to factor that in. Was there some kind of formula that's, that's used to uh, determine there's, income producing versus just uh, there, there's resident. a range and sequence and also what you're required by law to provide and relocation and and those types of things is okay. different from rental to to um, owner okay. occupied and, um, and and I think it's probably important with that question that we'll delineate okay you know, how that estimate was derived um, okay. and, and and again if there's one thing that uh, we learned through the the property acquisition here at North uh, now we are a little different in that this uh, Potentially is is a, a single entity um, that w that we'd be dealing with, but you know from your from your negotiated sale, your your property values, trying to 
to use some of those those factors to determine um, value and then when you get into um, if the board exercises the the eminent domain in that aspect um, their additional costs their additional time frames how that extends which you know just uh, also has an impact on cost um, so those are some of the layers that we'll try to um, try to work through and uh, um, give you the data that you need okay well, and I think, I mean, I, I, when Mike Kennard shared the idea of the, of the off-site athletic, that sounds like a simple solution and it's a good idea, but at the same point, I also know what that's like at North High has been with a soccer field at 29th and, and uh, Broadway, or Waco, um, and my kids having used that soccer field over time, it was very difficult for getting kids from North to there. So um, that makes it, you know, there aren't just always simple solutions. There's consequences to any decision that we make. So, okay. so any further discussion this evening? Do you want to just sum up quickly what you're in? Sure. What you're um, going to do uh, once again, and, I, and I, you just made a comment that uh, um, probably is important with this discussion as we move forward in, in every venue is there are no simple solutions. There are no easy solutions. There will be nothing simple because one decision impacts two or three down the line. Um, again, three-pronged approach, first being uh, coming back at April 22nd with the data request that, that you all have, have had, um, being able to provide that, uh, that information and level of detail for you. Uh, the month of May is um, stakeholder listening month and being able to engage the community uh, and get the feedback that, that you all need to prepare then for the discussions in June um, a as we move forward with uh, a target date of that of June 24th as, as, a, as a decision point. Um, and that would be the, the timeline and approach I would recommend to the board as you proceed. Right. I guess I want to uh, remind uh, board members as well that uh, you know, just general ideas and, and the public as well. Um, we are a volunteer board. Um, also, our administration in the budget cuts in the last few years have been cut by 35 percent. So that's why, you know, if you want answers faster than what you're getting them, I mean, we're waiting for those two. We're patiently uh, working on that. I, I think one of the other issues that I've been focusing on my mind is that the easiest thing for us to do is just to leave things as are as they are build the new school, build the other school, you know, remodel and pass the issue on to another board. Uh, but since I've re-upped myself, um, I'm <coughs> going to be on that decision process for four years and I want to be a long-term citizen of Wichita. So I, I don't, I, I think it's very important that we wrestle with this. And again, there aren't going to be simple solutions to a very complicated situation that we were handed because of the legislature. And, and I think one of our speakers, and we wrote to the paper this week that uh, they didn't see anybody lying, no legislator lying, only us. And, um, you know, I think I could list multiple uh, things, including a Supreme Court decision. But, um, but I think I also want to stress as well is that um, we've not, I've not counted noses. We're, we have not asked anyone how they're going to vote because we don't have anything to vote on yet at this point. Uh, people have, have ideas and we have questions, uh, but we're really listening to each and every person that comes to us, um, and we will make that decision as we go down the, down the road. So um, at this point, we'll move on to the next item, Mike.